Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Um, today I am talking to you about the Wearing Double Strung Cardboard Heart. Um, and I'm excited to review this one because it's kind of a fun new thing, um, which I feel like you don't see super often in the harp world. There's a lot of tradition and things that look traditional, so this is a fun new innovation. <laughs> Um, so the trick of this harp is that it is made with a wooden frame. This piece is wood, wood, and this little strip in here is wood. And the sound box, this part, is cardboard. Now you can hear, like, it's pretty sturdy cardboard. It's not like super flimsy. It's quite thick. You can kind of see in the sound holes a bit there. <laughs> it's quite thick cardboard, um, so it doesn't feel flimsy at all. It's a pretty sturdy harp, um, but it's also super light, which is awesome <laughs> if you're if you don't enjoy carrying around super heavy all wood harps, which sometimes can be a drag. <laughs> um, unfortunately, the lightness of it has one drawback, um, which is I find that the drawback of all lap harps is how on earth are you going to balance this? Um, you can't quite see, but I have these knee bones from Music Makers, um, they hook right into the back sound hole of the harp and then you can kind of rest it on your knees. Let's see if I can show you there. There you go. I kind of rest it on my knees. Um, and that does help it stay up quite a bit. That's super helpful. However, <laughs> um, when you are playing with your fingers, it's not a big deal because you're pulling the harp towards you. But if you are playing with your thumb, it's pushing the harp away from you. And I find that if you accidentally do it with a little too much force, like if you're really getting into the music, <laughs> um, it can be hard to keep that harp on your lap and not like just launch it. <laughs> but the awesome part about this harp is that um, I got this kit for $300. <laughs> and this is the double strung version. Um, so if you can find another double strung harp for $300, let me know, because I will be all over that. But as far as I know, this is the only one that's even under a thousand. Um, so if you are really looking to get into the double strung harp um, and don't have a whole lot of disposable income, because who does, <laughs> then this is a really good option. Um, as you can see, if you get the kit yourself, um, then you can do all sorts of fun stuff with it. <laughs> I really love mermaids, so I went for a mermaid motif. Um, I used acrylic paint and painted it blue and then put a nice finish on it, and there's some fun little, oops, sorry. <laughs> there's some little jemmy bits and stickers and all that kind of fun thing. <laughs> so you can really personalize it, which I enjoy doing. Uh, again, in the world of harps, a lot of things are super traditional and not very fun. So I decided to make this one fun, <laughs> which I mean, for only $300, you can afford to make it fun. <laughs> um, the other nice thing about this is again, at the $300 price point, um, you can do things like take it to the park or um, take it to, I take it to preschool and play for the kids. And I am not even a little bit worried that it is going to get damaged because if it does, it is not the end of the world. <laughs> um, I'm going to be okay if this gets a ding or a nick or something like that. Um, one thing that I do want to point out, if you get the kit and are assembling this yourself, um, and I talked about this in my building heart video as well, um, there is, instead of bridge pins, um, this neat little idea that is just a wooden bridge um, that extends for all the strings across the top, which is a neat idea. Um, however, <laughs> if you are not particularly smart like me, um, you don't realize that you have to put these tuning pins in in such a way that the strings will run into that bridge and not just sort of float off by themselves, as you can see and like say this string doing my low G. Um, and actually it wouldn't really be that big of a deal because they tune either way. Um, but sometimes you run into a situation where you originally had a string that wasn't touching the bridge 
Um, but as you tuned it up, it sort of came into contact with the bridge, but not enough to get a clear tone, just enough to sort of deaden it. So I have a few strings like that on the right side. Um, I keep tuning them and eventually they're going to get to a spot where they ring true and are hitting that bridge, but some of them just have not gotten there yet. Um, in the sound sample, you can sort of hear that on the D, and I avoided a couple of the other ones so you can get a better idea of how it really should sound. But here are some of those notes that aren't really ringing, like this one. You can hear that buzz, or the low G over here, or this D isn't really ringing true. So that's frustrating, um, but if you get a pre-made harp, or if you are thinking about it while you build it, <laughs> you should not run into that problem. Um, but I just wanted to acknowledge that in the video, um, when you're hearing the D sound um, and it's not ringing quite clearly, that is because of my screw up and not because <laughs> of the way that the harp is. <laughs> um, a couple other things about the wearing harp. It is super easy to put together. I am so not a DIY person, as you can tell by the way that I screwed up that. Um, but that's the only thing that I messed up. Um, so you could totally do it. <laughs> if I can do it, you can do it. Um, so those are the big advantages and also a couple of disadvantages of the wearing cardboard harp. Personally, um, would I buy another one? Probably not. Um, not that I don't think that it's a nice harp for the price. I mean, $300 for a harp <laughs> for the price. It's really great. And if you are a beginner or have no other way to afford a double strung, then yeah, go for this. It's not, um, to me, it's not like the cheap Pakistani harps because I mean, it's made of cardboard. So I think you get the idea that it's not going to last for 50 years when you buy it. <laughs> um, so nobody's trying to fool you into thinking you're getting this professional quality instrument. Um, it is pretty clearly like a DIY solution for cheap harps. <laughs> um, so just keep that in mind when you're purchasing it um, and just let your expectations rest at perhaps the right level instead of <laughs> don't have super, super high <laughs> professional instrument expectations, I guess is what I'm saying. <laughs> um, personally, um, I have the Ravenna 34 for my floor harp, and going from that to this, it is, I don't know how to put it exactly, it's not like disappointing, but I really, really prefer my Ravenna. <laughs> um, so yeah, I really want to recommend this more highly, and if you have kids, or um, like I said, if you just really can't afford a giant harp, then yes, go for this, because it is certainly not a bad instrument. Um, but if you are used to the more expensive instruments and the more professional quality, um, this might not be quite what you're looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and play a couple of sound samples for you. Um, I'm going to play Amazing Grace and a few chords up and down the range so you can get an idea of what it sounds like. Um, again, please do keep in mind that the D kind of wonky. That one's my fault. <laughs> and also, that uh, this is my first double strung harp. I have been messing around with this for maybe a week, <laughs> so <laughs> forgive my hesitancy and maybe not best playing. <laughs>
everybody. Thank you so much for watching my channel. Look right up there and click the subscription button if you would like to see more of my content. And I will see you next time. Thank you.